So our instructions are to write this imaginary number, complex number, in uh, polar trig form. And the first thing you want to do is you want to graph this guy. So if we're on the real and imaginary axis, we're one on the real and root three up on the imaginary. And just a quick little sketch to make sure you're in the right quadrant is all you need. So we went one over and root three up. And so instead of describing that as like one over and root three up, we could describe this with a radius from the origin and a length. Uh, so, so it's super analogous to the vectors that we were doing earlier. Um, so if we wanted to get this length, you could do it with Pythagorean theorem, or you could recognize this as a 30, 60, 90 triangle, where this is 30 and this is 60. Uh, the 1, 2, root 3 is, should be familiar to us, but if you don't know it, uh, you can always do that the radius is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Just a fancy way of um, uh, Pythagorean theorem. And that the tangent of your angle is uh, opposite over adjacent b over a. And so then at that point either you recognize it as a 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, or you bust out a calculator to do an inverse tan to find the angle. Okay. So now that we know that our um, radius is 2 and our angle is 60 degrees, then we could write this 1 plus root 3i as r times the cosine of theta plus i sine theta. So our radius was 2, we have the cosine of 60 degrees plus i sine 60 degrees. And this is our polar trig form. It's another way of expressing this. If you were to figure those out, uh, root cosine of 60 is a, a half, right? And sine of 60 is root 3 over 2, and distribute back in, oh my gosh, you do get 1 plus root 3i. And you don't know how many times I used to do this uh, when I was first learning, and I would just go here and automatically want to go back there because, hey, I know that, and da da da. And I would just go forward and then back because uh, I didn't understand why we would want to write such a clunky form of this number. But it turns out later, we'll get to it, when you want to do like big things like this to the 12th, this form is going to be super helpful. Uh, it, so you don't have to do it a bunch of times. All right. So that's the idea. We're going to write it in this clunky thing to help us later. So now let's kind of get rolling. That was 26. We'll do 28. We'll just keep going with these evens. So we have 1 minus i. So we write just a quick sketch first. will help a lot. So 1 on the real, negative 1 on the imaginary. So we have 1, 1. And again, we have these triangles that we recognize. It's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Uh, 1, 1, root 2. And again, if you don't know it, you can use that. And then you can do, so the r is going to be root 2, and the theta is going to be, I could call it negative 45 degrees, or I can call it uh, 315 degrees. The directions ask for between 0 and 2 pi, so I'm going to do the radian equivalent of 315 degrees. I'm going to do, uh, was that, a uh, 7 pi force. So, if we choose to, we can write this as r cosine theta plus i sine theta. So root 2 times the cosine of 7 pi force plus i times the sine of 7 pi force. And that is our polar form. I encourage you to do that. Make sure you get back to there. All right. And we keep going. So if we do 30, they have negative 1 plus i. So we're negative 1 on the real, 1 on the imaginary. So negative 1 on the real, 1 on the imaginary. And again, they picked something that we know, so we can recognize this 1, 1, root 2, 45 degree triangle. So I can tell that my r is going to be root 2, and my theta is going to be from the positive x-axis always. Uh, so the radian form of this would be 3 pi force. So I can write it as r cosine theta plus i sine theta. So root 2 cosine 3 pi force plus i sine 3 pi force. All right, that is our answer. We do it again.
So 32, negative 3 minus 3 root 3i. So we graph negative 3 on the x, negative 3 root 3 on the y. Uh, so negative 3, negative 3 root 3. Again, we kind of recognize this as a 30, 60, 90. Uh, the 30 is, uh, the short side is 3. This is root 3 times that, so the hypotenuse must be a 6. Again, if you don't know it, you can do Pythagorean theorem. You can do an inverse tan to find the angle. Um, so now that we know that our radius is 6, and that the angle starting from the positive x-axis is there, so that's in radians, that's pi thirds, so this is 4 pi thirds. So we can write this as 6 cosine 4 pi thirds, I can write, uh, plus i sine 4 pi thirds. And there you have it. We keep going. So if I do 34, 34 they just say it's 4. So if it's just 4, that's just 4 on the real. And I can tell that my radius would certainly be 4, and that my angle would just be 0. So if I write this as r cosine theta plus i sine theta, I just get that. So that's quite nice. I'll take that. If I do 36, I've got 8i. So I am 8 on the imaginary, and so I can tell that my radius must be 8, and my angle must be 90 degrees, or in radians that's pi halves. So 8i is the same thing as 8 cosine pi halves plus i sine pi halves. And again, why we would want to write this simple thing like this, hopefully you'll see later. Uh, it has its uses, but right now we're just kind of doing it. And I encourage you, cosine pi halves is um, 0, so you'd have 8 times 0 plus, and the sine of pi halves is 1. So yes, this does go back to there. Just a clunky, different way of writing it. Clunky for now, uh, useful later. Uh, we keep going, might as well. We got root 3 plus i. We graph, root 3 on the real, 1 on the imaginary, root 3, 1. We recognize this as a 30, 60, 90, so that must be 2. If our radius is 2 and our angle is pi 6, then I have 2 cosine pi 6 plus i sine pi 6. And there you have it. We keep going. Uh, i times 2 minus 2i. Mm, I don't know why they do this to us. This is 2i minus 2i squared. i squared we know is negative 1. So this is basically a positive 2. 2 plus 2i. So it's 2 plus 2i. And so 2 on the real, 2 on the imaginary, and 2, 2, 2 root 2. Again, you could do Pythagorean theorem if you wanted, but we recognize this as a 45, 45, 90, with the radius equal to 2, and then the angle, the equivalent of pi 45 degrees, is pi force. So this should be the same thing as 2 cosine pi force plus i sine pi force. Excellent. We do it again. Uh, 2 times 1 minus i, so this is just 2 minus 2i, and we graph, so 2 on the real, negative 2 on the imaginary, down there somewhere, and again, they have this 2, 2, 2 root 2, so your radius should be 2 root 2, it's a 45 degree angle, so the equivalent of that in radians all the way around from the x-axis, that's 7 pi force. So this is 2 root 2 cosine 7 pi force plus i sine 7 pi force. Are we having fun yet, right? Um, 
I think the rest of them are pretty much the same, so so I will let you play. And maybe I'll do 48 real quick. I'm looking at 48. It's just negative pi i. And so if it's negative pi i, you're just negative pi on the imaginary, not on the real, on the imaginary. So you're down here. So your radius is definitely pi, and your angle starting from here is 270 degrees, which the equivalent of that is um, 3 pi halves. So you can say that this is r cosine 3 pi halves plus i sine 3 pi halves. Cool. And that's that. All right, hope that helped.